Thanks, Leanne. Good morning. Police are calling an overnight car fire in Gatineau suspicious. A passerby spotted the car on fire on St. Louis Street around 11 last night. The fire spread to the house, which was next to the car. The vehicle is a total write-off. Damages to the home are still being determined. No one was hurt, but police are treating the fire as suspicious. A 22-year-old Ottawa man is dead after a high-speed crash in the city's south end. Police say the driver was going southbound on Prince of Wales when he lost control of the car, crossed the center line, and slammed into four RV trailers near the Car Canada dealership. This happened around 2.30 yesterday. Police say the man was not wearing his seatbelt. One of the sales reps was on his way here, and he said this guy went by him at an incredibly uh, amount of speed, and he passed five other cars at the same time. And then I guess what happened when he came around here at that high speed, he lost control, went right off the road in front of Car Canada because there's an RV storage place next door, and went and crashed right into one of the RVs. Prince of Wales was closed for five hours as police tried to piece together what happened. Today marks two years since Valerie LeBlanc's body was found outside a Gatineau College and police are once again asking for the public's help in their investigation. The body of the 18-year-old young woman was found beaten and burned in a wooden lot behind Cégep de l'Outaouais. Since her death, police have gathered 1,800 pieces of information and continue to investigate. There is a $10,000 reward for anyone who provides police with information leading to the arrest and conviction of her killer. The Syrian government is blaming foreign fighters for an alleged chemical weapons attack near Damascus, saying no Syrians can do this against another Syrian. The country's deputy minister says foreign militants carried out the attack with the backing of Israel and supporters in the West. Government forces, though, are still attacking rebel strongholds where the alleged attack occurred. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is urging the Syrian government to allow a UN team in Damascus to investigate. Opposition groups say the death toll could be as high as 1,800. The United Nations says there are now more than one million children living on the run as refugees. That number is about half of all refugees from Syria, and the majority are under the age of 11. Most of the refugees fleeing Syria have arrived in Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, Iraq, and Egypt. UN officials say it's another grim reminder of the deepening conflict in Syria. Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood has called for more demonstrations against the government today, one day after ousted leader Hosni Mubarak was released from a Cairo prison. Mubarak was flown to a military hospital while dozens of supporters looked on. That's where he will be held under house arrest. A court ordered Mubarak's release after a corruption charge against him was settled. The 85-year-old is still facing retrial on charges of complicity in the killing of almost 900 protesters in Egypt's 2011 uprising. Environmentalists in Brazil are trying to figure out why 10 tons of dead fish have been found in a Rio de Janeiro lake. The tilapia fish were discovered next to the Olympic Park site where the 2016 Games will be held. Biologists say raw sewage is likely the cause. The city's sewage company says all of its treatment plants are operating normally, but they're checking for leaks. This is not the first time thousands of dead fish have been found in the soon-to-be Olympic waters. Earlier this year, an estimated 65 tons were found. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford is encouraging people to visit the CNE and have fun. His message came as public health officials said the number of people reporting symptoms of food poisoning after attending the Canadian National Exhibition, Exhibition has reached now 100. Toronto Public Health says the agency is focusing its investigation on Epic Burger and, Burger and Waffles, a food vendor known for its headline-making Cronut Burger. And the city's environmental committee is giving Plasco Energy Group an extension so they can secure financing for their proposed plant. Plasco CEO Rob Bryden requested the extension and asked that it run through until December 2014. If secured, the plant would turn the city's trash into power using a process called plasma gasification. Councillor Maria McRae says the committee has not lost confidence in Plasco.